it's Balsa, and I am your Thursday host for Starting Out Solitary. Today, we are going to be continuing the conversation about relationship with deity and how our relationship functions. So, I apologize because I'm getting Facebook messages. So, deity is complex. Um, we've talked about this a little before, but um, for those of you who don't know, I tend to work ancestrally. Ancestrial, ancestrally ancestrally. Um, and so divine presence for me is the spiritual essence of my ancestors, all the people that have come before me and my adopted ancestors, which is a whole other topic. Um, but so today we're going to talk about deity and relationship deity. Um, I believe that all my ancestors are a version of deity, um, because I believe that all energy, spiritual essence is connected. Um, so, um, I do practices for my ancestors, offerings, um, working with them, paying reverence to them, celebrating their birthdays, celebrating their death days, um, and, um, feeding them occasionally. Um, and then we're going to move over a little bit to my relationship with deity as a whole. So when I started out my path, I was extremely drawn to Artemis. I did not know it at the time, um, but Artemis is the first um, goddess slash god slash deity um, that I ever connected with um, because she was a sibling um, to a twin brother, um, because she was a guardian, a protector, a huntress, um, and um, goddess of the hunt and of the moon. So my first relationship with Artemis was just studying, being reverent, um, making little models of her temple, <laughs> um, which has since been ruin, is in ruins. Um, and from Artemis, it moved to um, Auri. Um, Auri is an Arabian obscure goddess, which basically translates to muse. Um, and I worked with the Auri for a while. Um, and I may be pronouncing that wrong. That's how I've always pronounced it. So, um, if anyone knows what the Auri are, I would love to know what your pronunciation is in the bottom because I'm always learning because the internet does not have pronunciation for it. Um, that I have found. doesn't mean it's not there. It just means I haven't found it. Um, and with Auri, it was, um, just again, using their influence to create things, um, projects, art in their name, um, so on and so forth. And then from them, so we did Artemis, Auri, and then, um, I was extremely drawn to Venus in the shell, um, mainly because at that point I was studying, um, old paintings and she was really prevalent and I attributed her to Madonna. So it got into that. With that, I started leaving like flowers for her and offerings of that sort. Um, and then I found Sekhmet. Um, and Sekhmet was a real turning point for me because Sekhmet found me <laughs> um, while I was going through my divorce. Um, and so um, Sekhmet got offerings and daily devotionals and artwork and a space in the altar for a while she had her own altar um daily ritual things of that nature um from Sekhmet we I we I say we as a perspective um then I moved to um Ganesh and uh Kali um and those were really transformative for me they also got daily practices prayers offerings um things like that um, as I've moved in through my practice, um, then we added sets, um, and Anubis and Nefes, um, Nebet Het, depending on your pronunciation, whether you use the Greek or the Egyptian. Um, and then a little bit of Asat or Isis, but not very much. Um, and then, uh, I also use, uh, the Black Sara Kali, um, which is a cultural thing. So that comes from my heritage. Um, and it used to be daily practice, but now I have an eight-year-old and a full-time job and I 
have like a billion projects. So at this point, it's mainly a, it's a prayer thing. It's a journal writing thing. Um, now there are certain rituals that I do as far as offerings go for the different gods, depending on who I'm using. Um, there up here, you'll see a little lotus and then there is happy, um, set, <sighs> little set. Um, Sekhmet. Um, and then we'll do Anubis. Now, something you will notice about Anubis is that he is blue. Um, that's a whole nother subject. This is actually Sekhmet as well. So, um, there's that interesting stuff. Um, they all have their own little bowls. Um, that I do for offerings when I offer them salts, prayers, water, um, different things. So they all have their own bowls um, and they get those offerings. For me, it's a, it's a, it's a daily check-in with daily. It's not so much ritualistic anymore. It's more like talking to your BFF or when you were a kid talking to your imaginary friend. Um, like I'll have full-blown conversations with the deity throughout the day. Um, whether that be external or internal, um, mainly because when you're at the store having a conversation about like what you're going to buy for offerings, it's real weird to have that conversation out loud in the middle of like sprouts or whole foods. So that's an internal conversation. Um, but for me, it's about, um, that relationship is about daily acknowledgement of that relationship. Um, whether it's real, re ritualistic I can speak ritualistic or um, just ingrained in your practice. Like when I'm preparing food, um, I pray over the food and I give thanks to the different gods uh, of harvest when I harvest my food and all sorts of different things. So it's evolved from, you know, adoration to a daily conversation. So that is a little bit about my relationship with deity in the comments below i'm interested to know um how your guys's relationship with deity has changed over the years in your path um also i will see you guys next thursday blessings